Hmm. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Brad, back with another video. And this is a live stream, as you can tell. And this is my first time doing it from a cell phone. So we'll see how it goes. If there's any problems, you let me know in the comments below. I'm going to try and pull these comments up just to make sure that they're showing. Hope everybody's having a great day. Just wanted to get on here and holler at y'all and talk to you guys a little bit about how things have been going for me here lately. As you can see from the uh, title, you're now talking to the newest cardiac ICU nurse. Ruvim, what up? You're waiting on the Nurse Bass and Ashley Atkins collab. It's coming. It's coming. What up, Cole? What up, Murph? Appreciate you, Murph. I'm going to let a couple more people get in here. Hope everybody's having a great day. Thank you, Erica. Much love, Helen. Valerie, hello. Andreas, Ladena. Hey, guys. Uh, if you're in nursing school and you are on summer break, I hope you're enjoying it. Soak up every minute of it. Kathy, was this your first choice? Yes, ma'am. This was absolutely my number one first choice. And I got it, ma'am. And I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how I got it because I know that there's a lot of people out there in nursing school who have a dream department they want to work on and they're not sure, you know, the navigating their way to that is kind of vague. And I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Hola. Three long weeks coming up. Hopefully I see you. Brad's Do Rule. It's a great name. What kind of questions do they ask you during the interview? I have a video on that about interview questions. I'm going to go ahead and preface this video with if you guys ask me questions that I already have a video on, I'm going to let you know that I do just so I don't repeat information. And if you watch the video, it's much more concise and a lot better. So look up the uh, interview questions. I go over that there. Um, scrub techs. Uh, I wish I could talk about that, but I don't have much knowledge on scrub techs. I don't work alongside them, uh, nor have I in the past. I apologize. Appreciate you, Dia Diamante. So, yeah, man. The way this academy has been working is over the past 16 weeks, we've been rotating from uh, ICU to ICU. And it's been about three weeks on each ICU, a total of four ICUs. And basically, at the end of the academy, we tell them our top three. We want this. This is our number one pick. This is number two. This is number three. And as we were going through these rotations, um, I came across this cardiac ICU. And as you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, I love cardiac. My heart, I love heart. And uh, I got to rotate through the, the cardiac ICU and I said, this is it, man. I know that this is what I want. And a lot of people who are in my critical care academy cohort, they like that unit too. And unfortunately, that unit was only going to take two of us, two of the ten. And um, so that means I had a 20% chance of getting into that thing. And, you know, through hard work, busting my ass, and, you know, it all goes back to whenever I was in nursing school and when I was doing prereqs and I was really uh, studying hard that anatomy and physiology and the pathophysiology, being able to know those things and being able to talk about those disease processes in a very intricate and deep level with these nurses who are seasoned nurses who do this day in and day out. It's very, it leaves an impression on them. I got those comments from some of them and um, it all started there. So I'll go ahead and tell you if you're doing prereqs or if you're still in nursing school, you need to take all of that uh, patho and disease processes very seriously. But anyway, apparently I left an impression on them. We had a little interview. Uh, they liked me and it was a perfect match and I'm very happy and it all worked out perfect. Um, it's an ICU very fast paced like in the ED. I've never worked in the ED and I don't believe it's quite as hectic and chaotic as the ED would be. But yeah, it's very fast paced and somebody asked about patient ratios and most times it's uh, it can be one, one to one, one to two or one to three depending on the acuity of the patient. Um, but I'm very happy. I'll start next week. So the academy has basically come to an end. The way that it's going to work moving here forward is, you know, we've been doing these rotations through these ICUs along with critical care classes each week. Now what it's going to be is we're going to be working on our home department and um, <clears throat> have one professional day a month where we meet with our other cohort and 
I don't know, do fun activities. I think that's kind of what the plan is. Go out to eat or go watch a movie or something. Kind of like professional team building kinds of things. If at any point anybody has any questions, feel free to drop them below. I'm kind of done rambling, I guess. But I wanted to throw that out there because, um, like I said, if you've been following me, I've been putting these things on Instagram and Facebook, and so you've probably seen that. Personal quote. Whoa, well, I went away. Where'd everyone go? So what it also was interesting about this is that um, since there were four ICUs, there were it was it, it was almost like the uh, fantasy draft, like you you put your top picks and those ICUs put their top picks out of all the people who come through and you kind of get drafted if you will, and so it's kind of cool to see all these people in my critical care cohort kind of get dispersed to the various floors that we just rotated through, and. Um, it's very interesting. Somebody asked about the four different levels, the four different um, ICUs that we went to. We did, one was a med cert, one was a medical ICU, one was a medical ICU with step down, one was another medical ICU with step down, and one was the cardiac ICU. Oh, yeah, forgive me. I'm trying to get used to these comments and the way that they appear. What kind of nurse specialties would I recommend for somebody who's more introverted? I mean, there's a lot of introverted nurses now who work in the ICU, work in med surge. It's it's a, a typical thing. Um, definitely some kind of communication skills and being able to communicate with patients and family members is, you know, something that you need to do. But like I said, there are introverted people out there. But if you're looking for something true for an introverted person, then research. <laughs> That's a good way to go. Um, Will I still have an orientation once I start my new job or will I be right on my own? I will have an orientation. There will still be additional orientation with the preceptor getting used to not only taking care of ICU patients, but in this cardiac ICU, it's more specific because we we recover open heart surgeries right there on the unit. So right when they leave the, the OR, they come right to us. And so I'm gonna have to go through an orientation of hearts, taking care of them. Am I still enjoying it at all? Absolutely, I'm loving it. I'm loving this stuff. This is what I live for, man. I, I, I eat, sleep, and breathe patho and this nursing grind, as you know, if you've been following me. And so, yeah, I'm loving it. Absolutely. Um, you got your acceptance letter into nursing school today or, or you just got it? That's awesome. Shout out from LSU. Okay. What are my long-term nursing goals? Down the road, I can see myself doing CRNA. That's the goal for right now. We're going to see where, where uh, nursing leads me. But as of right now, I'm just going to grind and get some experience under my belt and get this BSN because I still got to get that. You just had a three-day marathon of Nurse Bass videos. Watching all my videos? Stop lying, girl. It's too many. Or guy. I'm not sure. Day high. That's awesome. Appreciate the support, man. Appreciate you guys for watching and hanging out with me. How did you know ICU was the one? I haven't felt that feeling before. Yeah, so that was the thing, man. I, I've mentioned this before, but... Whenever I was in nursing school, I didn't know what I wanted to do, you know? I mean, I knew I wanted to be a nurse, but I didn't know what specialty I wanted to do. And I told myself, you know, through these clinical experiences, I'm going to let that guide me in the direction. And, you know, semester after semester, I'm like, nothing's clicking. I mean, I enjoyed med surge. It was okay. It was interesting seeing the wide array of disease processes that you could get. But um, I didn't have that, ah, that epiphany um, until... I had the rotation through a cardiac ICU. Shout out, Camille. Appreciate that, love. Um, so I had the rotation through the cardiac ICU, and then it was like the epiphany. The light bulb went off. I said, this is it. This is what I want to do. I love cardiac, and um, this critical care patient population is, is right up my alley. Like, I don't know. I, and I can't describe the feeling. Like I said, it's like that epiphany. It's that light bulb moment, and I had it. And I hope you have it, too. I'm sorry about it. I'm keep moving this camera. I'm trying to scroll through these comments. Daniel, you rapping the 305? Boy, I was born in the 305. It's all about the you. Cole asks if I have kids. No, I don't have kids. But um, again, if you guys have been following me on my different social medias, the wifey, Mrs. Nurse Bass, and I are expecting. I don't even think I've announced that on the YouTube channel at all. But you're hearing it here on the YouTube channel for the first time. We're expecting on our wedding anniversary is the due date so big news bsn coming hopefully soon yeah absolutely that's the next step uh, as far as education is concerned i gotta get my bsn for sure gonna be looking into some kind of r into bsn you know fast track program 
You're currently doing your first med search class. It was an intense six week course, three more semesters and you're done. Enjoy it, soak it up. It's a beast, nursing school's a beast, but there, it, you know, there's a, a method to the madness and just take it for what it is, man. You know, we get, we get in the grind and in the groove of like, man, I gotta do care plans and I gotta do, you know, these medication flashcards and these tests and these skills labs and all this nonsense at the time it feels like just stuff you don't wanna do, but there's a method to it. And if you actually take the experience for what it is and soak up as much as you can, you'll be much better off for it. Absolutely. I'm sorry I keep moving this phone. I'm not meaning to. You started your prereqs in the fall at 17. You're scared. What you scared for? Get it done, baby. You're a dual enrollment student. You're in high school and college. Oh, okay. That's a lot. But if you're dedicated enough, you can absolutely get it done. And shout out to you for being, you're, you're obviously doing something right if you're, if you're on that track. So, you know, put in the work. Put in the work. Appreciate the congrats from everybody. Thank you so much. We're very excited. Doesn't matter if you do BSN online or offline. Um, it depends. Uh, if you are like have a previous degree and you're doing a fast track BSN program with no previous nursing knowledge, I would do. I would not do online at all. But if you've already done your ADN like me or you know some kind of nursing background and then you want to do an online BSN, then it may be appropriate. It just depends. Congrats, Sam. Two semesters left. The light's getting closer at it. The light's getting close to the end of the tunnel. Keep that foot down to the floor. Don't let up. Let's see. You're doing ROTC Army and pre-nursing courses at APU. Any advice? Take the prereqs seriously. That's the best advice I can give you. Do not slip up on those. You know, I had somebody say in a comment just the other day on one of my videos, they were like, it was on my pre take prereqs seriously video. And they were like, even chemistry, like, do I got to really worry about chemistry? And on one hand, like, I looked at it as a joke, too. I mean, I, I took it seriously when I was taking the class, but I looked at it as a joke. I was like, what do I need chemistry for in nursing? Hey, man, the example I gave them was, was very true. Like, think about in chemistry, right? I mean, if, if you've either gone through it, then you ain't have to think hard to re recall this stuff. But, yeah, not only your lab values, but also, like, think about your ABGs. That was the example I gave them. You know, you got to know your normal pH, you got to know your normal CO2, your normal bicarb, right? And it goes back to like that, um, basically, if you have a patient who's acidotic and they have high CO2, then how do we buffer that out? How do we buffer out these free hydrogen ions? That's what leads to the acidity, right? The free hydrogen ions in the blood that lowers the pH. We got to use bicarb. Bicarb binds with the free hydrogen ions, produces uh, carbonic acid, yada, yada, yada. But that's chemistry. So it does kind of come back a little bit. Same thing with micro. A lot of people ask about micro. That's another important prereq. You know, you see that stuff all the time. Why are we giving this antibiotic? Is this a gram negative or a gram positive? Is it rods, is it bacilli, or whatever that word is? What are the best research? Whoa! What are the best resources you used during nursing school that has helped you? Um, well, what I really used whenever I was in nursing school, <laughs> I always feel conceited. I use my brain. Like I, I really the powerpoints that we were given. I studied a lot from those. If I needed supplemental information, I would go to the nursing book. But I'll be honest, I didn't read the nursing book all that much. What I really, what I really used was, um, for the most part, was a Saunders NCLEX prep book that was really good to supplement the knowledge that I was getting. But the majority of, I, and I can't stress it enough, the majority of everything that I know came from my prereqs. I mean, I had phenomenal anatomy and physiology instructors and I had took two semesters of that. And man, when I'm talking about I studied, man, I didn't have a life. I did nothing. I studied and I dove into that material. There wasn't no parties, man. I couldn't tell you the last time I had went to a movie. There wasn't no date nights. Ain't wasn't none of that going on. I was nose in the book, damn near 24 seven. And man, it pays off. It pays off so much. It's a momentary sacrifice for a lifetime of knowledge that you're going to apply in your career that's going to make you leave such a great impression on potential employers, on instructors. I had, and this was very, I really appreciated this a lot. My last um, ICU rotation, which I just completed, this has been a whirlwind, yesterday. Lord have mercy, it was yesterday. The preceptor I was working with, she's an incredible nurse. She has been a nurse for like 25 years. She's a beast, right? She knows a lot. 
And we were going through pathophysiology and we're going through ABGs and PF ratios and cardiac output and all these different physiological things. And, you know, I'm nailing everything she's asking me because I had put in the work in three recs. And whenever we were giving reports to the offgoing nurse or the oncoming nurse, she was like, this dude right here is not like the normal critical care academy nurse. And, and that just like, I was like, that's what I love to hear, man, because that's what I strive to do. I strive to be the best. And anyway, yada, yada, yada. Hard work pays off. So put in the time, my friends. It's very much so worth it. Hmm. What do we have? Any tips for the tease exam? I have a video on the tease exam. It's an Ask a Bass video. Hashtag Ask a Bass. You should go check that out. What's one class in nursing school that was not your favorite? Psych. Psych was not my favorite. Um, that was probably my least favorite class. Now, uh, granted, I ended up enjoying it more than I thought that I was going to, but um, in the clinic rotations, we couldn't do anything. All it was was sitting down and talking to patients, um, you know, whether it was in a long-term care facility or in a psych hospital, which was interesting, but there was no hands-on, nothing to, to learn as far as skills go and um, the clinic setting was really just how to effectively communicate, which there's, there was uh, something to be gained from that, but it was probably my least favorite, honestly. And the meds and all those things, you know, they really emphasize meds a lot, and psych meds aren't my strong suit, I'll be honest. Hmm, what's good for nursing school tests? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, oh, Nurse Mercer's in the house. Appreciate the love, brother. Appreciate the love. Uh, you're in an accelerated online BSN program about to go to your second semester med search psych older adults and research any advice for psych <laughs> man no I ain't got no advice for psych <laughs> psych's a beast man um, it's just a beast because it's so vague and it's generalities like know your medications that's for sure know your medications and know how to therapeutically communicate and that's what like the majority of our exams always were were therapeutic communication how do you respond to a patient if they say this if they tell you i'm having hallucinations and they're diagnosed with schizophrenia or something like that you know um so learn your meds and learn therapeutic communication that's about all that i can give you man i apologize um what else do we have here appreciate y'all for hanging out with me man y'all are the best y'all are the reason i do this I got an email from somebody actually. I was going through my emails, man, because I got so many messages to reply to. I've been slacking with this academy. But I was replying to this one email, and this guy was like, you know, much love from California. I want to let you know that um, you got me through a really hard time in school where I thought that I wasn't going to be able to do it, but I listened to your words of like, make, you know, grind, grind. And he's like, I really adapted that to my life, and it's paid off. And I just wanted to let you know that you're actually helping people out there. And, that, and that's the stuff. That's what makes all this worth it. So for the fact that you guys come on here and hang out with me and watch my videos every week whenever I drop them, it's very much appreciated. I don't think that I tell you guys that enough. So thank you. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to keep up with these comments here. Um, when you were in school, what preceptorship nursing area did you choose? Uh, didn't have that. Believe it or not. There wasn't like an externship or an internship or whatever the word is where we had, we had a preceptorship that we didn't have it. Um, recently changed your mind about college was going to study nursing but instead you're going to study how to be a physical therapy assistant rock on man whatever you want to do man whatever's going to make you happy that's the that's the end goal best of luck to you how to answer nursing school test questions what's a good resource book um oh uh, what's it called it's the thing that we had to do for our um what the hell is it called cat kaplan i think it was kaplan yeah, I think it was Kathleen, what we had to use for our NCLEX prep. Um, that was a phenomenal resource for me. Um, it really breaks down how to answer NCLEX style questions, which are nursing questions. You know, nursing school test questions are modeled after the NCLEX. So if you look up uh, Kaplan NCLEX prep, it's it basically Google like how to break down a question. It It's really, it's really thorough and it helps a lot. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Mm-hmm. These messages are pouring in. <laughs> and this is awkward on the phone, man. I got to, like, scroll through them by hand. Mm-hmm. You love my videos, male nurse here, soon to be? Awesome. Awesome. We need more men in nursing. Um, 
Do I recommend peeps to go through an ADN program at a community college? Absolutely. I mean, I would say it definitely depends on um, where you live and the area that you live in and how the hospitals in that area hire. Um, but I graduated with an ADN from a community college <laughs> and, you know, new grad ICU nurse. So it can be done. Just um, just a little bit of knowledge you have to have there. What was your GPA when you applied for the nursing program? Lord have mercy. Two years ago. Let me think about that. It was like a three, four. No, it might have even been three, six, something like that. And yo, I was the last person accepted, the dead last person accepted. Only because I like, anyway, I'm not gonna go into it. But if a doctor mouth sauce as a male nurse, is it okay to punch him? I'm not gonna give you advice on that. That's on you. If you do it, let me know how that goes. I ain't gonna lie, your intro video song, I'll be singing it, grinding. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm, well, I, I am going to revamp the look of the channel as I have things in the works. If you saw my little Draw My Life video. Um, but I think I'm going to keep that song around because a lot of people seem to like it. You know, this is a question for Mrs. Nurse Bass. With Baby Bass on her way, is her experience in L&D making you guys more or less nervous about having a little one? Um, so, yeah, she has that experience in L&D. And um, she, it, it's kind of like a bittersweet thing. She's comforted in the fact that she has knowledge about these things and it's not a vague process going into it. She knows what to expect at all of these meetings and, you know, what kind of test she's going to have done, so on and so forth. But also, it's like that bittersweet knowledge. Like if you're in healthcare, you know what I mean? If you're in healthcare, it's great to know all this patho. But if you have something going on with you, it's like, damn, I know exactly what's going on with me and I know what bad things could happen. And that's kind of. Um, how she's feeling right now. It's like, man, you know, I don't want to get gestational diabetes or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, so yeah, I guess it's playing a factor. What was your GPA when you finished nursing school? Um, you're so scared you're going to fail out, man. That's a normal feeling. I'll tell you that. That's a normal feeling. My GPA when I finished, I want to say it was like, um, I think it was three, four something like three, four, like 3.45 or something like that. I got a couple B's on some on some classes that I just, you know, like psych. That was, you know, it's just classes that I don't know. I could have done better, honestly. I knew the material, but man, nursing school tests, the way that they're structured just wear me out. Did you use NRSNG resources? I didn't find out about NRSNG until I had already, uh, I was nearing completion of nursing school. So no, I did not. I did not use NRSNG while I was in nursing school, but I have been through their products and I highly recommend them. Everything that John Halls is doing over there with that company. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have ever come across different companies where some of them feel like they're just selling you things to sell you things. Like here, I just made this, um, I just made this little, uh, what would you call it? Like a cheat sheet just to make it. And here you go. Give me that quick five bucks. Everything that they're doing over there, the, the mission is so authentic. Like his his little slogan is nursing school shouldn't be so damn hard. And I really, that that message resonates well within me because I feel like there are some things that are fundamentally flawed about nursing education. And what he's trying to do is address those and deliver nursing information to students that are is a more easy to understand and consumable uh, form. No, so no, I didn't use them in nursing school, but I highly recommend them. And if I was going back to school, I would definitely use them. Am I drinking moonshine? No. <laughs> um, nursing is your dream. Well, go chase that dream. I'm ain't nothing stopping you but you. You haven't seen the Draw My Life cat? You should go watch that. It's not the true Draw My Life. It's kind of like the hype video for the Draw My Life, which will be coming. And I think that you guys are going to be surprised. How often you will do live video? Oh, I don't have any plans about any kind of structured schedule. I just do them every now and then. Maybe down the road, once I get into the groove of working on my home unit, I might come up with like a dedicated once a month live video where I answer questions. But as of right now, I don't have any plans. I have a lot of other things that are in the works. What's your advice for working during nursing school? Um, I have a video on that. But if you... Uh, can do it do it some people worked full-time how they did that I don't know I don't recommend that but you know a little PRN job a little relief here here and there a couple shifts that's okay uh, da, 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 da. how far along is your wife 17 weeks 17 weeks and no we do not know the gender yet sad to admit that you bombed an exam today by one question below passing you watched my vid and nurse Merce <laughs> that video with nurse Merce about how to bounce back um, you're still in shock. Any words of encouragement? 
I failed nursing exams. I, I failed one. Listen, man, it's an exam, okay? I this is like a soapbox. I'm not gonna go off, but it's there's so much emphasis placed on the exam, and you know, it's it's okay. It's, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it real succinct. It's okay. It happens. It happens to the best of us. It's just one of those things. They structure nursing school exams in such a way and teach material in such a way that it sometimes sets people up for failure. Sometimes. Now, my words of encouragement to you are to feel the emotions that you're feeling right now. It's okay. Feel them. Feel bad for yourself. That's okay. But take that feeling, that emotion, and turn it and flip it into a positive. I don't ever want to feel like this again. I don't ever want to feel like this again. Where did I go wrong? Did I not study hard enough? Make sure that you go review the exam if you're able to. Go sit down with the instructor and review the exam. Where did I go wrong? What do I need to place more emphasis on? Be self-aware and fine-tune your study habits so that next time you, you kick the next exam, uh, you knock it out of the park, and you know you don't ever have to feel that way again. But it's okay, man. Like I said, it happens. Have I ever thought of travel nursing? No, I haven't. Well, I mean, I have, but not ever seriously. It'd be awesome to do, though. Yeah, you want to be prepared for nursing school this fall? What can you do this summer to make sure that you are best prepared educationally? Man, what I recommend for that, I get that question sometimes. The main recommendation that I have for that is to kind of just like refresh yourself with that A&P, with that anatomy and physiology. Like at this point, ideally, that, that stuff, that should be pretty strong. You know, that should be a strong suit for you. Um, so kind of just brushing up on that, you know, GI, GU, skin, um, you know cardiac, respiratory, things like that, because all of that's about to come. And so it's important that if you know those things, whenever you start getting these medications that you got to study and disease processes, you'll be able to understand those things much more in depth. That's one of the reasons why I stress it so much. Like if you know the renin-angiotensin aldosterone system, right? It's part of your anatomy and physiology. It's physiology. It's how you know, we regulate blood pressure, right? Kidneys re release renin, the liver produces angiotensinogen. I'm not gonna go through the whole path though, but if you understand that the lungs produce angiotensin converting enzyme, and that converts angiotensin one into angiotensin two, then if you have to give your patient an ACE inhibitor, why am I giving them an ACE inhibitor? What is an ACE inhibitor? It inhibits the production of angiotensin converting enzyme from the lungs. So the angiotensin one never gets converted into angiotensin two, and you don't have vasoconstriction. It reduces blood pressure. Things like that. I recommend you go over that AMP. Just brush up on it. Like I said, just that as a small example. It makes it makes things much more easy. Any advice for any advice for incoming freshmen pursuing nursing? Don't play around with the prereqs. <laughs> Take them seriously. Hard to find someone talking positive about nursing. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm sorry about that. Some other people that I recommend, if you haven't seen them, uh, Ashley Atkins, RN, she's awesome. Nurse Nicole is great. My brother, Nurse Merce, if he's still watching, he's got old videos. He hasn't been putting out much lately, but he's got great content. Very positive people out there that you can watch, that you can definitely take information from. Um, they're out there, man. And you will be one of them. You're in high school and you're a junior who wants to be a nurse and you love my motivational videos. Do you have any advice? Again, just take all of your classes right now very seriously. That's the best information that I can give you. You got a preceptorship in the SICU. You feel so stressed. I don't know how this is happening for me because I'm an idiot. I don't know anything. Good thing is most of the younger nurses are very supportive. Oh, man, that's a lot of negative self-talk right there, man. You got to build yourself up. I don't know who gave you that self-image that... You're dumb, but you got a preceptorship in a sick you, man. They don't just hand those out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're doing something right. So, hey, just be a sponge, man. Be a sponge. It's okay to admit that you don't know a lot. They know that you don't know a lot. You know, that's a normal thing. They don't expect you to be, you know, a beast out the gate. But be a sponge. Be very, be there. Be present. Be ready to work. Be ready to learn. You know, and that's all that they're looking for. They want people who are, they want students or you know, new nurses to be engaging, to be engaged, I mean. 
Are you staying working days or are you going to work nights? My orientation is going to be on days, but I'm going to be working nights. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's Danielle Fontaine. What up, Danielle? I'll be seeing you on Snapchat. As a male nurse, did your other male friends give you a hard time for choosing this career? Yeah, a little bit, but not seriously. And obviously, they know everything that I'm doing on the YouTube channel. So, I mean, what can they really say? Just trying to help people, man. Let's see, let's see, let's see. You've been watching me since day one. Wait, yeah, you've been watching me since day one. Kifa, man, shout out. Shout. You know what? I've got some people that still watch my videos that leave comments, and I remember them from day one. If you've been watching me from day one, man, I pre like I said, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate y'all. I prepared you for nursing school. Hey, man, I'm just here to help. I'm just here to help in any way I can. Let's see. Oh, Alex Dancy's in the house. You, I'm a good looking nurse. Hey, man, I try. Um, how do you deal with text, test anxiety? <clears throat> That's a normal thing. Also, the best, the best thing to help with test anxiety is preparation for that test to be confident in the knowledge that you have going into it. But from my recollection of nursing school exams, they were so vague that like <laughs> you could have studied your ass off and know everything down to the T and still go in there and like make a, a C. So how to deal with test anxiety. Yeah, it's a normal thing and most everybody feels it. You just have to kind of figure out what's going to work best for you. Listening to music and getting in a relaxed state of mind before the exam is something nice. One of the things I did before every single nursing exam is I took peppermint oil and I rubbed it on my hands and I just breathed it in as I took the exam. And it's kind of a calming thing. Just little things like that that, you know, help you get through it, help you deal with that anxiety. You know, you just have to figure out what's going to work for you best. Any tips on how to study nursing while still having a family? Well, it's going to come down to time management. And uh, if you're able to do it, which a lot of people are, okay, I graduated with a lot of people who had families. Um, if you're able to do it and balance that life, work, school balance, uh, it's gonna you're going to be a better nurse whenever you get done because you're already going to have that time management piece down. But specifically for studying, um, my best advice is you need to get away. If you're able to, if you have a, um, a significant other who can watch the kids, if you have kids, I, I assume you do by family, um, you need to get away and go study elsewhere that's not at home. That's a big, big recommendation right there. Any tease test advice? Again, I do have a video. It's a hashtag Ask Bass video about the tease. You should check that out. Hmm. From a nursing standpoint, do you ever feel limited in what you can do with your patients? What do you do when you get a doctor who you don't feel like they have the patient's best interest in mind? My experience thus far in regards to working with doctors and seeing that right there, I haven't seen that yet. Um, do you ever feel limited in what you can do with your patients? Uh, I think in one regards, yes, especially from the time standpoint. I mean, you know, they just had either they just had it or they're about to have it in D.C., you know. Um, nurses rally in DC for nur safe nurse patient ratios. I mean, whenever you're, if you're on a med surge floor and you got six patients, six patients, you're very limited in what you can do with your patients because you're under such a time constraint. You have so many things that you have to do and such a limited amount of time to do it. And, you know, this isn't Florence Nightingale where you're sitting there and holding their hand and having a deep conversation with them and helping them get through all of their problems. That's not what nursing is nowadays. And um, it's not practical. Um, that is what, you know, nursing, I think, was supposed to be founded upon. But unfortunately, it's not it's not um, it's not feasible. So, yes, I think everybody and I got I've gotten comments from people about that. They feel like they can't do everything for them patients that they want to. And it's unfortunate, but it's um, it's part of the game. <laughs> What's my channel like? Go check it out. What you talking about? What you doing here? You better go watch some videos. Get some help. <laughs> Ciao from Italy. Shout out. That's awesome. Any books I recommend before starting nursing school? Um, get yourself a solid Saunders and Clex prep book. I recommend that. Uh, now I'm not saying like go <laughs> through all that, that book because that's a lot of information. But it's a great supplemental book for, uh, for the nursing information that you're going to be getting. Saunders. S A U N. D E R S. You're starting. You're starting nursing. Lord have mercy. You are a starting student nurse externship at a local ER. Any advice on how to approach it? Be a sponge. 
Just soak up everything you can. And if they have any, you're going to get some skills there in the ER. IV starts, insertion of Foley's. If they say, you want to do this? Say, yep. Even if you don't have any confidence in yourself at all, just get your hands on it and get just do it, man. It's okay if you don't get the IV. It's okay if you're nervous and break sterile field whenever you're doing the Foley. Start over, do it again. But, um, yeah, man, that's a great opportunity. Congratulations. Stay away from all the chatter the morning of the test. That comment right there, you're the real MVP for that. Whoever asked that question about test anxiety, take that one to heart right there. That was a good comment. Stay away from all the people chatting before the test. What do I think of, of the test bank questions on the internet? Never really messed with them too much. Uh, myself, personally. Lord, I'm so sorry. A lot of people did. Um, and I guess, you know, but you kind of have to like be a little worried of the validity of the answers and if it's like lab values you know those always change from source to source things like that what things did you do when you started as a nurse uh i'm not sure what you mean by that um sorry thinking of msn or dmp in the long haul no i'm thinking about crna as of right now do you recommend becoming a cna and volunteering while in pre-nursing yeah absolutely become a cna i highly recommend that that's going to give you a great feel for what it's especially in the hospital if you can um, it's going to give you a great feel for working with patients, time management. I mean, if you're taking on 10, 15 patients as a nurse tech, which I did, um, it really helps with time management, understanding that nursing, that CNA's role within the healthcare system. So whenever you become a nurse, you have a much greater appreciation for that CNA. It's a, it's very good. The floor you're on is so on staff, seven patients, and most of the time the CNAs are on one-to-ones. That's the big thing. That's why they're in D.C. right now. It's it's scary, you know. And they do statistical analysis of, like, for every single patient added on to a nurse's workload, the probability of patient mortality increases by whatever percentage. Like, it's there's a lot of research going into it. Let's see. Did I ever use Picmonic during nursing school? No. Um, I have looked into that recently, very briefly. But no, I never used it. I could see that being very helpful for somebody out there who um, learns visually, though. Absolutely. Do you ever know? Do you know the feeling of your clinical instructor watching your back constantly? How do you feel less nervous about that, man? You can't. You can't feel less nervous about that. That's just a normal thing. <clears throat> They're hovering over your shoulder while you're trying to. I don't know, whatever you might be doing, uh, inject insulin or something. I mean, you're going to feel nervous. That's a very uncomfortable feeling as a human being. Um, I can't, I don't know how to help you with that one. That's just a normal thing. And why they, I understand why they're hovering over your back, but <laughs> they got to understand how that makes you feel. Um, I'm only going to hang out for another couple of minutes, guys. I'm going to try to knock out some more of these questions. I had a question for someone who's a lazy reader and not the best at studying. Do you still believe anyone can push through nursing school? Well, now I would tread carefully with that. Um, if you're a lazy reader <laughs> and you're just trying to push through nursing school, I mean, it's very important. The knowledge that you're trying to learn is very important. So um, I, would, I would try and sharpen up those skills. I would try and sharpen up those reading skills and those study skills and take it a little bit more seriously. Um, because it's a very serious thing that you're trying to pursue here. And that reading piece, I mean, you're going to be doing a lot more of that whenever you start working as a nurse. So, um, sharpen that up. How did you get started on the road to nursing? My wife is a nurse, and that's kind of one of the ways that I went down the trajectory of nursing. Um, I never took human development in my prereqs, believe it or not. How did you prepare yourself for the NCLEX? Uh, I, th I think I have a video on how I did that, but you know, people ask me that question, like, hey man, how'd you prep for the NCLEX? And like, I'm not the person to ask about that. And I'm sorry, I really should have done better so that I could give you guys some valuable knowledge and information and insight, but man, I didn't. I, I scheduled the NCLEX like, I can't remember, it's like six weeks or eight weeks after I graduated. I was like, I'm gonna give myself some solid time to relax. And then some more solid time to prep. And man, I, <laughs> it's funny. Whenever I had to take the T's test to get into nursing school, I studied the day before the exam and I crushed that test. Before the NCLEX, I studied the day before the exam. <laughs> I'm so not the person to ask about that. I don't recommend that. 
100% do not recommend that. Um, but I passed on 75 questions. <laughs> you remember watching my head to toe assessment while you were still in your first term? You finished in August. That's awesome. Shout out to you for watching the video. I'm glad the content helped. And you're almost done, man. That's great. How'd you transition from nursing student to nurse? I passed the NCLEX and I graduated. <laughs> nah, I don't know. I mean, it was, you know, it's it's a weird transition. That's actually a good question. It's a weird transition, you know, going from having the clinic instructor right over your shoulder to having a little bit more autonomy and things are on you a little bit more, although you're working with a preceptor. Um, I might make a video on that. That's a good question. Another time in another place. Hmm. Bullying. Bullying. I have a video on that. And there are a lot of videos on that. I suggest you look them up. Nurse bullying. Just go on YouTube and type that in. You're going to see a slew of videos. Um, huh. Any advice for future male nurses on interpersonal relationships with female nurses in the sense of staying professional? Um, well, that just really comes down to, you know, who you are as a, prof as a professional. And... Um, you know, you're there to do a job. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and especially in the world of nursing, um, it's very, very important to keep a professional. You, Like I said, you're there at work to do a job. And, you know, it's not like your job is, um, you know, like me. I used to be a janitor. It's not like you're going to work to clean toilets and it's okay to chit chat. Like you're there taking care of lives. You know, there's, it's, I would say, just keep it professional, my friend. Um... What's up? This is so crazy. Last time I was watching you, I was waiting to see if I got into nursing, and now I'm done with my first semester. That's awesome. Congratulations, and thank you for the continued support. And Baby Bass is cooking on the way. Hmm. What else we got? Maybe answer two more. Two or three more. Do you know any nursing school vloggers going through this with a family? No. No. I don't think so. Sorry. Can I become an RN and choose to rarely work nights and disrupt can, and choose to rarely work nights? Um, yeah, you can absolutely become a daytime nurse. Happens all the time, of course. How do you attain so much information in like one semester? Sometimes it feels like I'm being shoved a bunch of info and it honestly is the lack of time. I have this sucks. That's, that's understandable. Absolutely. That happens all the time. I felt that way. Everybody feels that way. They give you so much damn information. How am I supposed to shove all this in my brain and make it stick? That's why a lot of people study study for exams and then they brain dump. Um, <clears throat> the best piece of advice that I can give you is to really take away the importance, take away the take homes um, from from your powerpoints and from your lectures. You know, there should be some key things that these instructors try and drive home with you. Like, hey, this is important. And, you know, and not just for the testing purposes, but for but for just clinical application, whenever you go and work as a nurse, you know, one of the things that comes to mind is, you know, if you're studying medications and we're talking about opioids, we're talking about narcotics, you know, what's the, what's the takeaways? Mechanism of action, you know, the half-life of the medication, the, who cares about that, right? I mean, you know, half-life, maybe if you're nice and you're working with drips, but what's the takeaways? What's it going to cause? What do you need to watch out for? Respiratory depression? Right, it can cause delirium, you know things like that. If you're given a BP medication, obviously you need to check the BP, possibly the heart rate, the takeaways, and you know just try and apply that to the macro, to the whole semester, to the test that you're going to be taking. Try and consume what's most important. Uh oh, we got a nurse vlogger with a family. There you go, soon to be. I like that. I wonder if you got that from me or not. I don't know. Bring back the radio mic from old videos. Bring back the radio mic. What are you talking about? <laughs> you like that? I'm dropping things. All right, one more, guys, and then I got to go. Do you feel like an emotional person can be a nurse? That's a good final question to answer. Um, yeah. <sighs> Get that out of there. Yeah, absolutely. An emotional person can be a nurse. There's a thing that's recently come out a study or whatever about something called compassion fatigue. And I was talking about this with Katie Kleber, who, if you don't know who that is, you should look her up on the internet, www.freshrn.com. She drops a lot of dope blogs. 
I recommend you check them out. But I was talking with her about um, compassion fatigue and nurses who, you know, they pour so much of themselves into their work and their patients and, you know, whenever patients die, you know, they just give so much of themselves that they get burnt out. They get burnt out, they can't handle it, and they bounce. They switch careers or whatever. Um, An emotional person can definitely be a nurse, yes. But you have to have a control over that emotion. You know, if you're taking care of patients, you know, it's like that nurse face. It's like that poker face. You have to keep that. You have to keep yourself composed. Now, there's, I'm not saying that there's not a time and a place to, like, you know, cry with the patient. I think most nurses have done that at one point or time or another in their careers. But, um, yeah, it, it can absolutely be done. But one of the big things about that compassion fatigue article is that you should make time for yourself. That's one of the big things, you know. You give so much of yourself and pour so much of yourself into your job and into your patients that you forget to take care of yourself. And that's one of the primary things that they're saying leads to this fatigue and this burnout. So, um, but yeah, I wouldn't be discouraged in that fact. I appreciate you guys for hanging out with me, spending some time with me, 45 minutes. Um, I hope you guys have a great day again. For those of you who I've spoken with just now and you've got a couple semesters left, man, put that foot to the floor. Push that gas pedal all the way down. You're here at the end, man. For those of you who have just graduated, you're starting these new jobs. Awesome. Congratulations. Never forget why you got into this. Never forget your why. Why you started to become a nurse to begin with. That's going to carry you pretty far in this game. Love you guys, man. I love you guys. I mean that. Thanks for hanging out. Until next time, it's your boy Nurse Bass. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace, guys.